Hey everybody, it's Greg from Park Journey. Uh, so before we uh, get into the rest of 2021 with holidays and uh, coaster updates from you know all the parks here uh, and elsewhere that we're doing updates for and you know all that fun stuff, I wanted to to share some some final thoughts on uh, Halloween uh, 2021. I know that we're all getting ready for holiday stuff, and we've got a lot of great holiday stuff on our industry news page. Um, so if you're planning on uh, visiting some holiday events, make sure you check that out. Um, but like I said, I wanted to, to do a couple of minutes talking about um, this recently past Halloween season um, and how it was you know, really different um, than a normal Halloween season, um, how it was just packed and busy pretty much everywhere. Um, so I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about that. Um, but before we get into it, uh, make sure you click below to subscribe to our channel. We would appreciate it greatly. Um, so before we get into, you know, my thoughts on um, the uh, Halloween season, I wanted to kind of share a couple thoughts on some of our favorite things that we did this year. Um, you know, we always try to make these uh, positive updates, so I'm not going to really comment on anything negative. Um, and to be honest, there really wasn't a whole lot negative um, this ha uh, Halloween season other than, you know, just crowds everywhere. Um, but like I said, I want to kind of share a couple of my favorite things um, from this Halloween season. So um, I think our favorite um, theme park uh, maze this year was Bride of Frankenstein Lives at Un at uh, Halloween Horror Nights. Um, it was just great storytelling all the way around. The talent in the maze was amazing. Every time we went through it, it was just, uh, we saw something new, had a great experience, um, just really, really well done all the way across the board. Um, I really love these Universal Monster Mazes, and I hope they continue them for, for years to come. Um, we'd really like to see something maybe from the creature um, next year, maybe in like the Jaws area, maybe a terror tram going down to that area with the creature. Um, I think that would be pretty, pretty awesome, pretty badass. Um, so hopefully we'll see something like that. Uh, and But either way, we would really like to see these uh, Universal Monster Mazes continue um, throughout the years. And maybe a, a just a, a pure wolf man maze. Um, to, we, we love a good werewolf maze, and there's just not enough of them. Uh, so maybe a, a good just wolf man maze one of these years, too. So kudos again to the Halloween Horror Nights team. Um, not just for Bride of Frankenstein, but it was a, you know, a trying year, and they did a great job all the way around in here in Halloween Horror Nights at Hollywood. Um, and as far as our, our favorite returning um, maze, uh, you know, I, I would say uh, we really loved um, Not Scary Farms mazes. Uh, Origins was really good, even though a couple of times we had a, you know, hot, kind of a haunted line. But that was our favorite maze from 2019, and it was great again this year. Um, really loved uh, Pandora's Box. Again, this year is super fun maze. Um, but we also had a couple that were most improved. Um so the first one I'm going to talk about is uh, Pumpkin Eater at Not Scary Farm. Um, they totally revised the last maybe third of this maze um, for this year, and it was it was amazing. Every single time we went through it, um, I think it's actually the maze we visited the most at Not Scary Farm because it doesn't usually have a line. Um, but only only twice we went did we not have um, front of the line. Um, we we purchased um, we had our Scary Farm passes, but we did get front of the line for pretty much every night other than Halloween. Um, but we walked right on it on, on Sunday night. Um, super, the talent in here was amazing. Um, super fun, super fun maze. Um, and I, I'm glad that they, uh, updated some of the, uh, the back end of that maze. It, it really, um, completed the story as far as, um, telling the story of, you know, the pumpkin eater and things like that. And the other really improved maze was, uh, Willoughby's Resurrected at Fright Fest at Magic Mountain. Um, we weren't really anticipating anything new in any of these mazes. Um, they were all returning mazes. Um, but the quality of Willoughby's, I, they did completely, it was like an entirely new maze. We had a great time the couple of times we went through it. Um, so kudos to, uh, the Fright Fest team for that. Um, you know, I, I think we said in our Fright Fest review, we do hope that a couple of the mazes get updated for next year or get changed out. Um, you know, but, you know, it's still a great maze. And then, you know, this year we, we really um, made a conscious effort to visit some smaller events, some home haunts, some independent events. Um, I think at last count, I think we visited 36 events this year, which for us um, is a really, you know, high number for, you know, someone like Parks and Cons. I think they were at like 125 or something this year. Um, so 36 for us is great. Not good for them, but uh, kudos to them. Uh, if, you, if you're not following them, check them out. They, they were all over the place this uh, this Halloween season. Um, but some of our favorite um, independent mazes, um, 
we were absolutely blown away by Dark Harvest. Uh, this was out in Chino. It was a corn maze and then it had scenes. Um, we hadn't planned on, on going out that far east. Um, we're, we're kind of north of LA and that's, you know, far east of LA. Um, so for us, it's not really easy to get to, to those events. Um, so we've never really gone out that direction for, um, for, you know, Halloween stuff, but we had really good word of mouth for that and also the fear in 3D in Chino. So we did make a, a visit out there um, and absolutely loved it. Again, the talent was amazing. Um, the creepiness of the corn was, was creepy, uh, but su super kudos to them. I really hope that that event comes back because we will uh, definitely go back next year. Um, and then as far as home haunts are concerned, we, we visited some that we had uh, visited in years past, uh, such as Beware the Dark Realm, which is always amazing. Um, Pirate's Cave, that was our first time at that haunt. It, uh, like I, I'm still shocked that they were able to do that in their house. Um, so if you haven't seen these videos, make sure you check them out um, on our YouTube channel. Um, and then, you know, up, up near uh, Magic Mountain, the Santa Clarita area, there's just so many um, amazing home haunts. Uh, Club Fear was amazing. Some really great um, yard displays up there, Sombra Cemetery and Coffinwood. Um, just, you know, just blowing up out there. So, you know, definitely uh, make sure that you visit some of those next year. Um, they are not to be missed uh, at all um, when you're, you know, making your, your day for Fright Fest or a weekend. Uh, it, you can't do them all in one night. I would say you probably need two nights for Santa Clarita stuff. And then obviously Orange County stuff is always, you know, amazing. So now that we kind of went through some of our, our favorite stuff, I want to kind of talk about um, how, how this how the season was was really different um, than, than previous years. You know, typically in a Halloween season, typical Southern California Hall Halloween season, you'll get, you know, opening weekend will be, you know, pretty busy for, you know, Universal and Scary Farm because all of the media and all the fans are going out to get their, um, you know, their first visits of the year. Um, and then usually, you know, it's, Fridays and Saturday nights will be really busy, but then you would get, you know, your Thursdays um, and your Sundays that that were not, you know, you could go and, and enjoy and it wouldn't be too busy and it would be fine. Um, this year was not that at all. Um, Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood sold out every single night. I don't know if that's ever happened. Um, usually you could get in on the Thursday or a Sunday pretty easily, um, but they sold out every single night this year not sold out a lot. Um, now I do know that some of the parks had some reduced capacities this year. I don't know what that capacity was. Um, it didn't feel reduced capacity. And you have to remember too, with, in the case of not scary farm, you know, the, uh, scary farm passes were very limited this year. So it was basically anybody who had added them on in 2019 for the 2020 season got, uh, this year, scary farm pass. And then they had, um, a sale in, I think may a very, like maybe a week, where they released some some additional ones, and they were only add-ons for your season pass. You could not buy them um, separately uh, without a season pass. So, you know, typically you would think maybe it's busy because of all the scary farm passes. It it was not. Um, a lot of people who usually get them were not able to get them this year. So, um, it was just it was busy every single night we were there. Opening weekend on uh, Thursday and Friday. Um, again, Thursday was media night. We were not there as media, but we were still there um, doing our coverage. And, you know, it was busy as always. Um, that Friday wasn't too bad, um, but we did have front of the line for most of the night then as well. So it wasn't too bad for us. Uh, and then I had gone back uh, another Saturday with my son and we, we had front of the line as well. And it was pretty busy that night. But again, you know, front of the line is the way to go. And then we went on Halloween and we have been on Halloween quite a few times. Um, throughout the years. This is probably our maybe fourth or fifth, maybe even sixth Halloween that we've been there. Um, and it was the busiest Halloween we've ever seen at um, Not Scary Farm. Um, in the early, early part of the, the evening, it was, we did the buffet and it wasn't busy. Um, and then later on, we, you know, we left probably about 11. Um, it was a Sunday night. Um, but, you know, for closing, it looked pretty dead too. But in the middle of the night, it, it was pretty busy. I would say um, Origins probably had about an hour and a half to two hour wait. Um, in the in the mid evening and typically you know Halloween is you know a, a pretty empty night for for most events um, and if you've never gone to a, 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 an event on Halloween night definitely recommend it because it's just a special night to be obviously at, a, at an event um, and then moving over to, to Halloween Horror Nights you know we went last Thursday after doing Cemetery Lane um, and it was absolutely packed it was probably the busiest that we'd seen it um, in all of our visits that was our fifth visit and final visit and we had done friday nights we had done saturday nights i think we did the first sunday night and then obviously you know opening night um and it as far as crowds were concerned we it felt the busiest we'd ever seen it um we did do the after 11 express pass on thursday so we were able to finally do all the mazes 
and even on our, our nights, our in between nights when we did like Chainsaw Chase Out and just kind of went to hang out, you know, we only did um, Bride of Frankenstein because that was like the, the shortest line um, throughout the, in, you know, the entire event. Everything else was, you know, hours. And even Fright Fest, you know, we had recommended very early on to, to not go on a Saturday night um, because it's just on Saturday nights, it's become a hangout for teenagers and they don't really do anything other than hang out and try and scare the monsters. And it's kind of annoying, to be honest with you. Um, but we did go on a Friday night, the same night that we did Santa Clarita Haunts, and it was absolutely lovely. Uh, I was it's weird to say lovely in a Halloween event, um, but we got there about 1030. Um, this did the scare zones walk through and then did the slider show. Um, and it was it was great. So, um, you know, we, we will continue to recommend that. Now, as far as, you know, why everything was so busy this year, I mean, obviously, you know, the main reason was because everybody, you know, nobody did anything in, in 2020. I um, mean, everybody was eager to. Um, you know, get out and, and do stuff. Uh, and this was the first time, you know, that a lot of people, including us, you know, felt safe, you know, going out, you know, after, um, you know, being vaccinated and, you know, things like that. And most, most of the parks still kind of required masks. Um, knots did not, um, they recommended them in the theater for his puppet up. Um, but both universal and magic mountain on, you know, nights over 10,000, um, you know, had masks and, you know, we, we always wore ours anyway, um, unless we were kind of just walking around out, outside without a, a lot of people. Um, so I think that that, that probably plays into it. Um, but it, you know, again, previous years, even with, uh, you know, with, you know, the, the life going on, you know, it was not busy every single night. So, it, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, do I think it's a, a one-off thing where it's busy every night or do I think this is a trend that's going to continue? Honestly, I think this is a trend that's going to continue. Um, unfortunately, I think the effect of this is going to be an increase in prices. Um, I've seen and heard some rumors that the scary farm pass is going to be doubled in price. It is not yet, um, but we'll see what happens with that. You know, uh, express passes at Universal sold out every single night, and you'll know you know that those aren't cheap. The VIP or RAP tour sold out every night. Um, you know, so I think that again, the 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 side effect of it being busy every single night, despite the prices, is we're going to see a price increase for things next year. Um, I think it's inevitable. Um, you know, if people are going to come, no matter what the price is, parks are going to keep increasing the prices. It's just supply and demand. So, um, unfortunately I think that that's going to, to happen. I don't know if that's going to reduce the crowds. Um, maybe more nights next year. Um, you know, maybe, but you know, you got to give people, you know, nights off. Most of the people that work Halloween events, they also have, you know, that's not their job. That's, that's just what they do. I'm um, doing Halloween season. So they, they do need those nights off. Um, and then the other thing that was this year is, you know, there was a huge um, lack of talent this year. A lot of people just didn't come back this year. Um, so some of some of the events seemed rather bare. Um, but surprisingly, like the, the local events and the, the independent haunts and the um, home haunts didn't have this problem because it's not a month and a half, right? It's not two months of, of nights. You're only committing for a couple of weekends. So I think that that kind of played into it a, a little bit as well. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens next year. I, th I think, um, like I said, I think this is a trend that is going to continue. Halloween is just getting more and more popular. Um, every single year, Halloween events are getting more and more popular. Um, parks are realizing that it is a huge money making event. Um, you know, as far as knots, you know, in years past, you know, Scary Farm was like a third of their yearly income, if not even more than that. I pretty sure that that was probably the case this year, especially with the shutdown. Um, you know, especially with the lack of scary farm passes, you know, most people that were there were there on day tickets. So, you know, you take away, you know, that scary farm pa pass, you know, and we only used ours, what, four times? Um, in previous years, we had used ours, you know, multiple times, maybe five or six, maybe seven. Same with Universal. Um, we only used ours, you know, five times or four times, you know, one first night was media night and then four nights with our frequent fear. And, you know, in previous years, we had used them five or six times. And again, that was because we had made a conscious effort to visit other things this year. Um, I don't know what that means for us in, in subsequent years. Uh, next year, we're going to be, you know, rather busy. Um, in, in the season, we'll be up in Canada for, um, at least a week, if not more, um, next October. Um, so I don't know if that means we won't be doing, um, you know, the, the frequent fear of the scary farm passes next year. I'm not sure, you know, and then, uh, you have the thing where, um, some of us have our, uh, not passes good until May and we can't add our scary farm passes on until then. Um, so there's a whole, whole thing going on there too. Um, but you know, again, I think this is a trend that's going to continue. Um, I think you're going to also start seeing a lot more 
events at places that you don't see them now. Um, maybe more parks are going to um, adopt these things. There's, you know, there's like you have like Coney Island in New York. They don't, as far as I know, they don't do anything. Um, you have all of these smaller parks um, that don't really do much. You know, Castle Park has an event now. Um, so, you know, it'll be interesting to see if some of these other parks, you know, kind of start adopting, you know, Halloween events. Some parks like Silver Dollar City and Dollywood, they do, you know, family friendly ones, you know, harvest things. Um, but, you know, you got, then you got parks like Holiday World. Um, you've got, uh, Kentucky Kingdom, you know, um, you know, Hershey Park, uh, you know, Kennywood. Um, they don't really do, you know, the, the scary Halloween stuff. They, they do maybe some, some other things. So I would not be surprised to see some other, um, you know, non-chain parks um, start doing things like this. You know, Silverwood has a great Halloween event. It's popular every year. They've shown how it can be done um, without, you know, being a huge theme park. So wouldn't really surprise me to see um, this kind of continuing and growing um, in the future years to, to try and, you know, get some of that business. Um, and then, you know, there's been rumors for years that uh, Disney is going to um, do more scary stuff at like DCA or at Hollywood Studios. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. They're they're saying that they can they can make money. There's a market there. So, I mean, a villain's maze makes perfect sense, right? Um, but we'll see what happens. As far as you know, holiday stuff this year, I anticipate it being busy, um, just like Halloween was. People are wanting to get out. So Saturday nights are going to be your busiest nights for holiday events. So you know, try and avoid those if you can. Um, but I I do foresee um, holiday events being just as busy, if not busier, than than Halloween events because they're not separate ticket events. So. Um, don't want to give parks any ideas about having separate ticket events for holiday events. Uh, D you know, Disney does it. You know, if, there, if there's a market there, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these parks started doing, you know, after hours of charge holiday events. I, I could, I can kind of see that being um, the wave of the future. Um, you know, for good or bad, we'll see. Um, all right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for this uh, update. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, ho hope you had a great Halloween season, and hope you're going to have a fun holiday season. Um, again, make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. We're going to have a lot of great updates from uh, holiday events coming up over the next you know, month or so, month and a half. Um, and make sure you check out our industry news page for a lot of um, event information for holidays. We will be at IAPA next Wednesday, or Renee will be at IAPA next Wednesday, so stay tuned for that. We'll have a lot of great updates from there. All right, everybody, take care.